Hey guys, it's AJ from Design the Everything. Uh, this is my first video in my new build series of videos where I'm gonna build, well, I'm gonna try to build a 3D printed jet engine. Now, I'm gonna do another video soon about the, uh, the theory behind it, my constraints, how I expect it to work, and so on, but I just released the talking video with the uh, administrative details video, so I wanted to do an actual build video today, um, and a build video with fire, which makes it more exciting. Right now, I'm planning on using alcohol as my fuel, specifically isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%, and I'm using that, um, well, A, because that's what I have on hand. B, I don't want to use 100% because I want to keep the temperatures down as much as I can. Now, I'll be doing a, uh, some more research into which fuel is the best later, um, but for now, I'll be assuming alcohol because that's what I have on hand, and it seems to work. I remember in chemistry class in high school, my teacher came in with one of those big water containers, like you put in a, a water dispenser. He put isopropyl alcohol in it, like I have here, and shook it up and then lit the top. And it did a kind of a rocket thing like this. Now this one I just did at home with a, uh, a baby food jar, but again, using alcohol. Now that reaction's cool, but it only lasts for a second or two. And the whole point of a jet engine is to go from just this one reaction where you get a second of it running to a continuous run, which is my goal. Uh, I don't plan on developing any usable thrust with this engine, but just a, a sustained running reaction. There's a couple of different steps that it'll take to get there. Um, first, there'll need to be some sort of body that'll hold it all together. Uh, secondly, it'll need to not catch on fire or explode. And, um, but it also need a steady supply of air and a steady supply of fuel. Now with the, the jar or the, the big water dispenser bottle like my, my teacher in high school did, liquid fuel was added and then it was made to be vaporized by shaking, by agitation. While it might be kind of fun to find a way of doing that with a, a jet engine, um, that's not what we want to do. We want some sort of fuel injection. So this right here, at least for now, will be my fuel pump. This is a 60 milliliter, which is two ounces, um, syringe, which right now I will manually operate. Um, we'll see when we get around to actually building the fuel pump if we want to do it manually or if we want to... Um, you know, automate this, or if we want to just build a completely new pump. So we'll see about that. But for now, this will be what we test with. Um, this connects nicely to this tube. I don't remember what the inner diameter on this is, but the outer diameter is a quarter inch. So that'll be our fuel line. You see that it, it'll just hook nicely on there. But we need some way to vaporize the fuel into a easily burnable mixture. And that's what we're gonna to do today. Now, I think we can do this with a 3D printed nozzle. As I keep finding out, 3D printed parts are super porous and really bad for holding liquids, especially ones with a very low viscosity like, uh, like isopropyl alcohol. Uh, but that's actually okay. That might even work in our favor because we're trying to vaporize the fuel here. So it doesn't matter if it leaks because it's just going to be forced out of the nozzle anyway. It doesn't really matter if it's forced out the side or forced out the front. Now, 3D printing something that's going to be spewing fire sounds like a really bad idea. Um, and it may be, or it may not be, but I have some evidence that it'll actually work. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with is I've already gone through, and this is my notebook where all my designs start, and I've kind of been thinking about this. I've done some rough sketches, and more importantly, I've written down some of my constraints. My constraints and my, uh, I'm, I'm calling them concessions, uh, which are basically how I'm limiting the scope of my work. Um, and I'll do a full video on these later. But right now, I just want to point out that one of the things I have already conceded is I don't expect this to run for more than 20 seconds without failing. I just want 20 seconds of runtime. So the 3D printed part doesn't actually need to last that long. It just needs to last 20 seconds. Um, and then I can always just 3D print more. It's the nice thing about having a printer is I can uh, just make another one or you know iterate and make a, a better one given, you know, if this with the size of these are, it's going to take two minutes for each one to print. So I'm not worried about that at all. As another test, I made these guys. These are basically just a 3D printed replacement for 
the jars that I was using in the other tent. They are printed out of PLA. They aren't even ABS or nothing high temperature. And But you may notice I had to seal them. Uh, I used a, a truck bed liner on these. Because if you watch my compressed air tank video, 3D printed parts leak a lot. Especially the alcohol, which seems to have a lower viscosity, which has an easier time leaking. Uh, but the truck bed liner did a pretty good job. I did find out, if you look at some of those drips, I believe that the alcohol actually dissolves the truck bed liner. So it probably wasn't the best choice for this. But there is no fire damage on any of these parts, in the exception of the big one, where during one of my tests, I, um, I spilled a little bit of alcohol on the top and the whole thing caught on fire for a second. And there is a little bit of melting on there. Otherwise, they're all perfectly fine. Now, if you missed the administrative details video I just did, yeah, I'm using Inventor, not Fusion 360. Um, Inventor is easier to do assemblies and simulations with, which is why I'm using that instead of Fusion 360. Um, but as I said in the administrative details, Inventor and Fusion 360 are almost exactly the same, except the buttons look different and they're in a different place. my first design. The idea is there's a nozzle here aiming at a solid wall. And when the fuel goes through the nozzle, it'll hit this wall here and splash. And I'm hoping that'll be enough to vaporize it or atomize it or whatever the term is. I'm not working with super high pressures and I don't have a way of machining a really fine spray nozzle. So I'm hoping this will work. If you look in the cross section here, you can see what it looks like on the inside. So again, you got this, which is where it comes in. And then the area, the cross-sectional area, the flow area, slowly decreases, which means that the, the rate of flow will increase, or the velocity that the fluid is moving will increase. Hitting this wall and splattering, hopefully without catching everything on fire. I'm going to go ahead and 3D print this out, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so my first version, this guy, seems to at least kind of work. I think I do probably need to leave, make this gap a little bit bigger for the uh, tube to get in, but it did seem to seal all right, so maybe I shouldn't just mess with it. I did a couple tests. Um, I, the first one I did was just dumping alcohol into the jar, no shaking, no nothing else. Second one, I shook it and then lit it. And then the third one, I uh, used this. Now the results were not the same when I used the nozzle and when I shook it. So this thing is not as efficient as shaking it. So it's been a couple more days and I've had some time to do some research and this is my second version of the nozzle. Um, probably aren't going to see that. But it's much more like a spray paint nozzle, which is what I was looking for. As you can see, this one gives you a much finer spray. This one works like a spray paint nozzle or an airbrush or even a, um, a power washer. All of those things need a much higher pressure to run. So I will probably have to use some sort of pump with this style of nozzle. However, it did work well enough with the syringe pump. Now I thought I had failed. The one that I sprayed instead of shook just went once and it didn't do that wah, 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 wah thing that, that they have been doing, um, especially when I shake them. Except I realized that the one that I sprayed was louder than the one that I shook. And so I decided to do a little bit more investigation, and I took a slow motion video of both of the flames in the dark, and I realized something that's really important. So I'm going to show you the slow motion videos, and I want you to pay attention to them. First, it's the one that I shook, followed by the one that I sprayed. What you should have noticed is that the one that was sprayed burned way faster than the one that was shaken. That means we actually have a more efficient fuel reaction here. 
it's probably burning about the same amount of fuel, but it's doing it in a shorter period of time, so we're getting more energy out of it. And that's why it's louder. If you watch them side by side, you'll notice that the sprayed one burns about three times faster than the shaken one. Well, with that testing, we know that this is the nozzle design that I'll move forwards with. I'll probably have multiple of these or maybe one um, little nub in there with multiple of these holes and cones on it to get a really nice efficient spray, but we'll get to that when I actually have the uh, rest of the engine designed. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. I appreciate that. I know this was a longer one. If you want to support me, you can click on any of the Amazon links and buy something. And I'll get a small kickback into that to help me buy a new microphone. That's what I'm saving up for right now. Additionally, I offer Fusion 360 classes one-on-one -on -one over Skype or Google Hangouts. I don't have a set price for those. I do those on a pay-what-you-want basis. But any donation you give me will go straight back to the channel, help me buy a new microphone. After that, I'm going to get a new camera. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video, where I'll talk through some of the larger scale, the system scale, design and engineering processes that go into starting a complex project like a 3D printed jet engine.